You are live. Okay. Um, uh, welcome to the uh, Annapolis Historic Preservation Commission meeting for 10th of May, 2022. Uh, quorum being present, uh, the meeting shall come to order. The commission operates pursuant to the land use article of the annotated code of the state of Maryland. Local authority for the commission is derived from municipal code of the city of Annapolis chapter 21, section 56. Uh, the HPC operates pursuant to the state of Maryland open meetings act and therefore no pending application shall be discussed among commissioners outside the public hearing to determine the disposition of any application. Okay. Next agenda item is call to order. I'll go across the top. Will Scott. Present. Kevin Smith. Here. Kevin, uh, Kim Finch. Present. Leslie Xavier. Here. Bobby Collins, who serves as our vice chair. Here. Bill Williams. I do not see him at the moment. He may check in in a minute. All right. Um, next on the agenda is announcements from uh, staff. John, um, actually, I will circle back a little bit. Um, we have John Tower. There he is. John. Hello, John. Uh, st serving as staff for the city. There we go. And Kimberly Consoli, who is our um, taking the minutes. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, one more minute to see if Bill. Okay, we're good. All right, uh, John, um, or any uh, other commissioners, announcements? Uh, let's see, announcements. Um, HPC is averaging almost an application for every calendar day this year. <laughs> that is pretty, that is, that is quite a bit, and I think it's unprecedented. So it's good that we're getting so many uh, applications. And I would say that uh, parklets and uh, reviews for uh, uh, outs outside dining are definitely on the uh, upswing, and that's good also. So, uh, yeah. so a lot of actually a lot of a lot of good things happening. Um, we're working on NOVs. Of course, I was out uh, last week, um, but uh, back back at the office and getting things done. Uh -huh. Just real quick, notice of violation, so NOV, notice of violation. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. all right. Yeah, we, we, hand, we hand them out like Halloween candy. Uh -huh. However, let me say that Mike Malinoff has taken a slightly different approach to N NOVs. And that is until notices of violation are cleared up, additional approvals will not be granted. That is in, that's significant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much. Absolutely. Uh, so that's a good announcement to lead into another announcement. So a new planning and zoning director uh, joined yesterday, correct, John? Mm -hmm. So Mike is, is now city manager, um, <clears throat> correct. For, and so can you tell us a little bit about that? I think Mike, uh, Mike Malinoff uh, will transition into uh, that position. Of course, for, for those of you who are, are familiar, uh, Mike Malinoff at, uh, was previously city manager. Um, and so he will be again. And he was acting uh, uh, chief of planning and zoning. Uh, and now we have a uh, new director of uh, planning and zoning. I'm just getting to know him a bit, uh, Michael uh, LePage. And uh, uh, enjoying talking with him. Uh, today I brought him, uh, uh, some of the these minor issues uh, that certainly don't seem minor to the, to our applicants, and uh, <laughs> let him <laughs> right let him know about the uh, uh, the the upcoming uh, uh, decisions uh, about two of our applications. One, which is one seventy one uh, uh, Conduit Street for a traffic arm, um, and then the other one is uh, one thirteen and one fifteen. Uh, Cathedral Street for uh, parking in in the rear, and you will you will uh, see these eventually. Uh, but until then, uh, 
they're they're being worked on, looked at, considered by Office of Law. And John and I have talked a little bit, and I've asked John uh, to set up a meeting that I can meet Michael um, and um, just get to know him. Right? I mean, that's the whole point of of, of this. He's new to the city, and uh, I will be, you know, just getting to, to uh, know him. And, and, and John uh, uh, is getting to know him too. So. <laughs> Well, let me say he does, he, uh, his house that he uh, left uh, just outside of uh, uh, Princeton, uh, New Jersey, uh, is over 100 years old. Yes. And I, I've so, had an opportunity to look at his resume, and I, I would be happy if all of you did, too. We, we can see that he's had, he's actually, I believe, served on a, a preservation commission in the past. Yeah. As a citizen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Tim? Yes. Uh, may I make a brief announcement for the good of the order? Of course. I just wanted to let my fellow commissioners know that um, I have been subpoenaed to give a deposition uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, it doesn't relate to our commission's actions, but it's a cautionary tale. This is because I signed a plat uh, in 1986 as the chairman of the planning commission. Be careful what you say and do as a member of the commission. <laughs> More and on. Exactly. 1986. Um, I, I don't think I'm that old yet. No. Yes, uh, I, you're probably not. <laughs> no, my daughter was born in 1987. So I can always take that. So uh, thanks for that uh, opinion. And we all, I, I always appreciate all of your um, commissioners. Um, um, a, 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 a seriousness about what our role is, and well, you're you're right. I mean, this is important, um, and it can uh, what and in future discussions, it, it's it's going to come. It's going to be important that we. I'm sure what you signed, Will, was right in line with what your role was. So, um, okay. Um, any other announcements at the moment? Okay. Next um, on the agenda is approval of draft minutes. Uh, April 12th is up. Um, any changes uh, to the minutes? All right. I, um, I will accept a, a motion to approve the minutes for April 12th. I move that we approve the minutes for April 12th, 2022. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Um, next on the agenda is new violations um, and status of any active violations. So, um, uh, commissioners and, and John, any um, new violations that you would like to discuss? I do have a question if we have a minute. Of course. Um, John, what's going on with the old Coldwell Banker building on the circle? It's looking a bit shabby. It is. It's, isn't it deteriorating quickly? Um, it, it's remarkable, isn't it? it each, I pass it all the time and I think, wow, um, I believe that it's been purchased. Okay. Or, sorry, that there is a contract, a pending contract, and it, it, uh, uh, the contract may be uh, contingent upon... Uh, exploration uh, for uses of uh, the property. Um, and it's, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the intended uses are, but my guess is that they would not be uh, for office space. My guess is that they would be for uh, short-term rentals. Really? Boy, it seems to be the, the, uh, uh, the winning ticket for uh, most investors. And so this was the Capitol building, right? This was the evening Capitol uh, building, right? The corner of, of Church and, and uh, West Street. I'm not sure it housed the Capitol. I think it did. Okay. okay. I'm thinking Northwest. I'm thinking Northwest. I'm thinking of across from the post office. So and anyway, yes, it, it's... Uh, uh, I've talked to other, some investors who were not successful in their bids for it. So I think, I think it, may, it may be going to uh, uh, 
a group that uh, has recently bought a lot of property around town. But we'll say people that bought Ogle Hall. No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think it may be, and this is, I'm couching this. Uh, I think it may be the, uh, uh, the owners of the, uh, the luxury boutique hotel at 134 uh, Prince George Street. Oh, okay. Um, but again, you're talking about a trend that we've been talking about in previous meetings, so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It goes on unabated. Yeah, yeah, perhaps under administrative business um, in an, another meeting, or not tonight, but maybe I'll, I'll just tee it up. Um, these, um, th this trend is occurring and, sorry, I just got a text. Um, and I, I think we might want to have a discussion about what role the HPC plays in, in discussing public policy regarding um, approval of multiple licenses or multiple uh, ownership uh, of properties and also changing their use. We are not responsible or we're not involved necessarily directly in a change of use from commercial to residential um, or commercial office to commercial hotel, which may or I'm not even sure to tell you the truth, whether that's a a complete change, but I think we might want to have a discussion about that. If this building were to be converted from an office building um, to a hotel or a short-term rental, um, would, would be a, a, yeah, another thing for us to talk about. I think that's a good thing for a, an administrative discussion in yeah. a future meeting. So yeah. Tim, do you know what percentage right now of uh, properties are short-term rental in the downtown area? Um, I do not. Um, and as I said, that is that is for uh, another commission to discuss. Okay. I'm probably I'm just curious. No, yeah. uh, we know it's a considerable. Uh, um, and uh, honestly, the, the I'll just say the pace isn't slowing. Um, and I I think individual owners uh, uh, having a building is one thing. A, a group of investors buying as many as they can uh, or want to is an excel a trend that is uh, accelerating. Did, did I, you know I, that these kinds of investors are now trying to buy um, buy up uh, trailer parks, mm -hmm. which is having already even more dire consequences because. You know, you don't have to raise the rents or the grand rents in trailer parks very much to put a lot of people out of their homes. Yeah, because really so many people who live in them are doing that because it's so economical and they don't have uh, large financial resources. Uh, yeah. Tim, what I would, I think this is an excellent point for us to discuss as a commission. Um, but I wonder if there's not somebody in the larger world of historic preservation that's already studying this and might have some kind of you know, expertise and information to offer that we could locate. Maybe John knows somebody or we could look yeah. around and see if there was somebody we might even invite. Yeah. I mean, in, in DC, the, the percentage is like astronomical. Yeah. Of course, the property is astronomical. Yeah. So it sounds like I'm a volunteer here. Who wants to... <laughs> Go out oh, I thought and... you said you were volunteering. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> if, you to, if you have a question about that, I'm, uh, I would recommend you talk to the National Preservation Forum. There you, you can, go. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, it's got to be on the put, agenda. You can get on there or you can put the question on the site and it's ask really... people to respond. Yeah, um, I'm on that. Um, and I respond on, on relatively free, relatively yeah. a weekly basis at least. Um, yes, I, I, Kim. Yeah, I didn't I know you have, could do that, but that sounds like right. that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think uh, for a concentration of properties like we have, um, residential properties especially. Um, yeah, and we're we're, you know, we always compare ourselves to a few other, but this has got to be a trend everywhere. So. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, John, can I ask a question? Do, is a special license required for short-term rentals in the city? Yeah, not a special license, just a rental license. Oh, right. Just a general rental license, so they're not classified <laughs> differently? No. Yeah. Uh, so they're actually they just the city council passed uh, six or six months ago that that um, there was a limitation in terms of ownership by non property owners, non resident, uh, non -resident and and it had to do with um, limiting corporate ownership, quote unquote corporate ownership. And but I'm I'm not an expert on this. But but creating different corporations and different LLCs to own properties mm -hmm. totally get around that. So I believe. I think you're correct, Tim. Is that right, John? Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been tracking it too. I think you're quite right, Tim. Yeah, I, I think, and I've had some conversations. But I'll I'll do two things. I'll follow up with Ali uh, uh, Tierney, our uh, alderman, um, to make sure she listen hears what we talked about this. And, and second, I'll get clarification on the exact um, current legislation so we can all be smart about it or accurate about it. We're all smart. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I have one other, viol uh, John, one other um, violation brought to my attention by Historic Annapolis, by their neighbor uh, on Pinckney Street, that the, the property, uh, to the south of them, to the southeast of them, uh, continues to deteriorate, and they uh, would like. Uh, they wonder what action is going to be taken, whether there will be a violation uh, noticed or not. So, can you give us an update on that, John? Well, um, I haven't. I haven't undertaken uh, uh, anything uh, new about it since my last encounter with the owner. Uh, which was very teary, and uh, uh, I could uh, I could certainly feel the uh, uh, the stress of ownership. On the other hand, uh, there's no question that the house is deteriorating. Now it's within the historic district, but that house is not historic. Uh, that is a new house um, that is uh, covered in uh, German siding, so it appears to be a uh, uh, historic house. It's not. Um, but I'm having a, an NOV meeting tomorrow morning. So I can discuss that and I will. Yes, so it can- enough, enough time has passed. Yes, and uh, I know you've had interactions with the owner. Um, and as you would preaching to the choir here, it may not be a historic property, but it is uh, in the historic district. Therefore, um, it should be, well, interestingly enough, it should city codes regarding maintenance in general apply number one right and then then our overlay hpc overlay comes so if, if it's not being maintained properly then then the city is responsible for um main, uh, getting the owner to com comply with code so i know it's difficult but um, so i did get a, a a complaint from the neighbor right who happens yeah. to be historic Annapolis. I had a, a person on one of my architects tours ask why it was in such a dilapidated state. That was about a year ago. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Um, is it occupied? Uh, well, it, it was, but I, I thought it was a rental. Well, there's all sorts of issues you can follow up on. Occupied is one issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then in general. So thanks for, if you would do that. And I can report, yeah. I can report right. to the neighbor. Uh, right, some, some of these, some of the violations are very easy, such as uh, uh, drink logos on umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't think that'll ever go away, but uh, uh, you know, this, this one's a, a, a much bigger issue. So, it, and it's, it's absolutely correct to bring it up. Sure. All right. Any other um, active violations, John? I, I, the one that I remember on the corner of South and Cathedral looks like they're making progress. I, I meet with uh, uh, Wilson Crespo, uh, who now says 
if I had known then what I know now, this would have been so much easier. And uh, I wouldn't shy away from from doing another one. He said, I'm learning as I go along. And oh, it, looks, uh, it looks much improved. Yeah. 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 He's he's said uh, he's got a, a little bit of preservation at work there. Yeah. I'm I'm pleased with the outcome as it moves forward. Great. All right. Um, any other active violations, John, or other commissioners? All right. Um, um, actually, we we are not going to put anything on the consent docket tonight because we would love to have a conversation with uh, the folks here from Chase Home. So um, we'll move to new business. Um, for uh, 22 Maryland Avenue, Chase Home, I think, are you already promoted to presenters? They will be as soon as they accept the prompt. Awesome. Oh. Well, hey, Hello. Jen. Hey, John. Greetings, all. Hello. Um, I, I, hi, Connie. Uh, hi, Jen. Um, uh, welcome to our meeting. Um, Thank you. Uh, thanks for, for uh, joining us. And, and as you heard, your application um, has been reviewed by staff and uh, it, it has been recommended for approval. Uh, mm -hmm. so th that's, that's important. Um, but I think some commissioners have some questions for you about, um, the current state of the house. So it's really more of an information session for us. This is, uh, is an, a very important, uh, building, uh, site, uh, in, in the historic district. And we always are interested in what's going on with it. So, uh, that being said, um, you can briefly describe your your uh, application, which has to do with one specific area, of course, the um, the, the fire stair, and then uh, we can have a, a discussion, and then then we'll we'll have a, a effectively. A, a, I think it's going to be an approval um, with a condition that John has set forth. So, um, who uh, who would like to lead the discussion on your part? I I will do that. Okay. So John, introduce yourself and... Uh... So, um, my name is Jan Scopel. I'm the, I've been the facility manager at the Chase home for a little over 10 years now. Um, uh, and before I uh, begin, I want to thank all of you for partnering with us to, um, as owners and staff of historic properties to, um, to conduct business and to keep our properties historic in the way that is in the public good. That is, it's, it's really clear. I wanna thank John and Sherry for all the help that they've given in um, helping us get to this stage. Um, th this is a real hallmark for, for the Chase home. I don't, I, it's not been, um, we've not needed this much work um, I'm sure for a long time. So um, in, in this case, this, this project is to sh temporarily shore our south, three-story south. It's, um, it's not been particularly, um, I would say it was not in the original design of the house. Um, it was added a little bit probably after the house became a home in the for um, destitute ladies in 1890 or so. Um, the porches were uh, began to be added a little bit at a time, and in the process of doing that, I mean, it, um, if you could see the porch now, porches now in in their current, I would say like remodeled state, um, how they 
the porches have been added one on top of another have oh. created some serious structural issues that we now have to deal with um, at a temporary basis. And so that design was done by John Matteo, our structural engineer, who, um, you, who um, authored the design that you have in your possession as part of our application. Um, how much more can I offer here? That's, that's actually, that, that's fine. I think we've all yeah. seen the application and staff okay. report. Um, commissioners, what questions do you have? Jim? Yeah, John, I will. Um, a couple of questions I have, um, and I'm really only seeking very basic information so that I have a better context for uh, actions like this evening's and any future um, uh, that you bring to us. Uh, who is the legal uh, owner holder of the title to the property at this time? I'm going to refer to Connie Ramirez, a board of trustees for the Chase yes, Home. Well, I'm a trustee, so I'm one of the owners. But uh, the board of trustees um, are the trustees for the Chase Home Incorporated. It's incorporated uh, as a nonprofit under the laws of the state of Maryland. A little background on that. Uh, if you recall, Hester Ann Chase Rideout uh, in her deed uh, said there should be a corporation uh, to manage uh, this house as a home, as Jan has just said. And in 1890, the people that she had designated, uh, in fact, came together and formed that corporation. And the current trustees are the heirs and assigns of that original group. So it is not in any way legally uh, connected to the Archdiocese, uh, Episcopal Archdiocese of Baltimore. As a nonprofit, nonprofits, when they dissolve, need to turn over their assets to some other organization. And in her will, she asked that the assets of the Chase Home property be turned over to the Episcopal Diocese in Baltimore, yes. But if, as long as we don't dissolve, we are our own corporation. Yeah, uh, thank you for clearing that up. I was uncertain about that. Um, and my other, only other question is, um, I don't recall, and maybe I simply have not been invited or I've overlooked it, uh, that you've had galas or organized fundraisers during the roughly four decades I've lived in Annapolis. Am I correct? We've had some small ones, but the uh, property is not conducive to crowds. <laughs> of course, but and you don't so, have any kind of a development director or uh, do anything. We have, we have an executive director, that's Heather East. And so at the moment, she's also our development director. Yes. Um, and we have had small fundraisers. We have an annual appeal. Mm -hmm. And we have gotten uh, a small grant, for instance, from our uh, heritage area uh, a few years ago to work on some uh, public information pieces. Yes. Uh, so that we have um, now with this um, repair uh, projects that we are facing, um, we will be moving into a much more aggressive fundraising uh, activity. Yeah. And we will be sure to send you a notice about that. Yeah. Okay, and I will be sure to make a donation. But I do have two recommendations. I was hoping you would say something along those lines. Um, I was uh, uh, formerly the president of the board at the county uh, uh, arts council, and they actually, by their charter, uh, are supportive of historic preservation. So you should, I hope, uh, know about, and if not, look into asking for um, a grant from them. This is exactly the kind of project, what we're talking about tonight, that would be suitable for that. And the state also, as I'm sure you know, makes grants to support the historic homes and other properties uh, in the state. And the process for that goes through our legislative district. Uh, and so you might contact Senator Elfrith or someone like that uh, who represents us and yes. again, because of the significance of the house, I would think you would have great success with that particularly. Yes. We are exploring really all those avenues. 
Well, did we had to go back to basics. I uh, really, once we came to the realization that this house was really too fragile for its use as a home for um, elderly women, uh, we have then been building a program for how to proceed in um, the repairs and better management of the property. And we've just about now, thanks to our architect, Scott Patton, who is sitting on sure. one of these screens, right. um, nice he stuff. has helped us develop a master action plan, which took our building condition analysis that was done by Milner Preservation Associates. And now he's moving that into a master action plan. And that has really helped us focus. And now we're following that up with a historic structures report. Uh, which we are about to start. That's excellent news. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Connie. I appreciate that. That's a little out of the ordinary for us to get a great update um, on one of the, I don't know, maybe six or seven most important buildings in the city. Um, so well, th thanks for the update. Uh, I can add, Jan may not say, but you all come over. Come on over and see us. Absolutely. You can visit us. <laughs> You're here. Tour. You're active. You're active. You've got. Uh, I know the garden is open, and um, there's some uh, activity around restoration of the um, the Palladian window. Mm -hmm. So um, I see that from my other hat on my, on my Chesapeake Crossroads heritage area. So I know the mm -hmm. organization is is moving forward. So we have the mundane <laughs> process now of. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, approving a certificate of approval uh, tonight. Um, and so I will take a motion. Uh, there is a, a, a condition. So Bobby, if you would make a motion for the, for this uh, certificate of approval, please. I move that we approve the application for 22 Maryland Avenue. Um, it is a proposed structural shoring with the condition that the shoring is temporary and that a revision of the application will be submitted on a six month basis to review the condition of the porch in order to address the issues of structural deficiencies and deferred maintenance. And, um, well, and then I need to ask the uh, applicant if they accept the condition of review on an ongoing basis. So, Jack, John? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Stain. All right. Thanks. Go forward and shore up a <laughs> interesting structure on the side of an incredibly important structure. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you, Jen. With you. Hope to see more of you. Yes. And thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for a really good application also. Oh, yes. thank you. Scott, yes. did you have a hand in that? <laughs> You're muted. I did. Uh, now Jan, Jan put that together uh, himself, so uh, we are we were just advising. We had nothing to do with the graphics. Uh, that was all him. So Scott looks like you're at home. <laughs> I am. My background is always where I would rather be. <laughs> so um, um, many hands make for easy work. So there you go. There's a team. Okay. We are um, we are thrilled to be uh, assisting Chase Home uh, in in the ongoing conservation and preservation of this incredible property across the street from another incredible property. So right. it's uh, yeah. it's uh, quite the corner uh, in in Annapolis with those two buildings facing each other. Correct. Couldn't agree more. Did you know that a noted Annapolitan was born in the house next door? Oh, yeah. I heard born that. There. Raised <laughs> there. He was raised I heard there. that. Yes. Hold on. Born? No, no I, I corrected there. myself. I caught myself. Right. right. You're younger yeah, than me. I, sh I shouldn't go there. Yes. Yeah, through, through osmosis, you know, and, and uh, uh, some sort of absorption of, of uh, historic lead paint, I've become a <laughs> preservationist. Oh, there you go. <laughs> You had, a, you had a better view of the garden than anybody. Yeah, true. Um, okay. Um, a little shameless um, promotion. 
Scott and Anna of Citadel are um, responsible for the gate two at the Naval Academy. It's in progress being installed. So, what is it that again, John? What is it? The Naval Academy gate two. Oh, oh, gate two. Oh, gate two. Oh, oh nice. nice. The reopening of gate two. Nice. Yeah, we we set the stanchions on Wednesday of last week, and today they dropped in the vehicular and the pedestrian uh, gate leaves, which have been fully restored. So nice. um, it's now back where it belongs, but there's still a lot of work to do. We um, actually were able uh, to convince the Naval Academy to also um, replicate the missing masonry piers to the left and right of the of the uh, metal assembly so the, the the complete composition will will have returned when we're done excellent thanks for bringing that up i mean that's so important as as we interact with the naval academy and all of its uh, uh border um improving that would is always a, a, a significant uh, event we got started at the Naval Academy thanks to uh, Mr. Tower, who brought us in <laughs> to help out oh. on Gate Three, uh, the two right. uh, guard houses for which John won a Maryland Preservation Award. Yeah. Yeah. So full disclosure, I've I've probably done a dozen projects with Scott yep. and Emma Citadel, and all of them have been uh, just yep. incredibly the successful. Right <laughs> was that shameless so, promotion there? So we're we're very happy that John has taken this position, but with a little bit of lament that uh, we don't get to work with him on projects anymore. Yeah. Well, agreed. Okay. Um, we need more people involved in the historic preservation trade in general. So thanks very much. <laughs> well, Thank you very much, uh, and we'll see you again, I hope, soon, on the exterior okay. stuff. Okay. Yes, yeah. thank you all. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank you, Connie. Good night. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Okay. Um, the other two applications uh, have been withdrawn. Um, I will ac actually, I think, John, um, at least in one case, I, I kind of think it's important to explain to commissioners and the public why things get on the agenda and then they get withdrawn. Um, there were some technical issues that weren't complete by the time of our meeting uh, and therefore they were withdrawn. I, I think that um, 15 Southgate Avenue, there were some things from uh, code enforcement that weren't complete by the time of our meeting and therefore they get withdrawn. So, you know, cool. that's in general. That's, that's correct. They, they've been addressed. Um, I have to say that I'm enjoying working with Kempion, uh, uh, Ruby on on this and and Chuck McNamara is the is uh, the uh, lead architect. I know it's frustrating uh, for the applicants, but um, the one the one thing to consider about all of this is that the review of these applications is so thorough that after we issue or we after you as commissioners uh, approve them uh, the permit can be issued fairly quickly. So all the lumps get, get uh, mm -hmm. ironed out prior to you actually reviewing it as commissioners. So that's, I think there's, there's, that's the silver lining. Other, otherwise, oh my goodness, there are two, uh, uh, two projects from that firm that we're not hearing tonight. Yeah. And they're both landscaping, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. So there's when we, yeah we review exterior changes and things landscaping have ticks all, all sorts of other boxes so that's why both of those will draw on the seat. Okay, um, I uh, that's it. Uh, administrative <laughs> yeah, business. Yeah. Um, I can give you a, a one one item to update you on from prior meetings. Um, I did submit our report on furniture and fixtures uh, to uh, city council. Uh, I forwarded the report that you reviewed and our current, gu the guidelines that we approved in January. Um, the city clerk accepted them. I asked for her guidance on uh, when 
what the next step we are the guinea pig i'll be honest and they've acknowledged that it's been acknowledged that we are the guinea pig for this new procedure for promulgating rules and um so we, we I, I think when the agenda permits with city council, we I've offered myself and John to go and give the background and accept comment. Uh, but these rules and regulations are actually in place and John is using them on a probably a daily basis. So I sent that in a week ago, or two weeks ago. I wasn't on the agenda Monday, I might get on the agenda Tuesday uh, in two weeks. So we'll see, I think they're probably figuring out between the, the city clerk and the office of law, the next step. Uh, I would expect, frankly, that they would ask for comment from either John or I and, and or questions. Well, interestingly enough- Oh, hi, Jackie. <laughs> I, several months ago, asked that exact question myself you know, about rules and regulations, would there be a city council review? Oh, and Cheryl's here too. Hi, Cheryl. Acknowledging that Cheryl is joining right. me. And Mr. Lyles told me that there would be no city council review of rules and regulations, that they go to the rules and was it rules and city, they go to the one yeah, committee, no. they review them. If they want to have a public hearing on them, they can have a public hearing, but that then they just get forwarded to the city council and there is no public review by the city council of them. Now that's what he told me several months ago. Yes, so that's, con that's consistent, Jackie. And we have gone right. through we have gone through the rules uh, committee, the city rules right. uh, committee. That was a public hearing. I submitted a report, which is what the code says. And whether mm -hmm. we need to do anything else, I don't know. Right. But I'm, we're happy to do whatever they want. But I think you're right, Jackie. I, we might be done with. I hopefully you're done. I mean. I think that if they wanted to ha then have another hearing, the, the, the regulations that they put in the code for this process are so detailed, you know, that I think that if they decided they wanted to have another hearing by the city council on them, they would really need to, to amend the code. I exactly. Mean, yep. You know, I, I, so I think I they, agree. I'm not sure they all realized how complicated they made this process. I, 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 I agree. I, I, and who knows? They, they might be thinking about changing it because it's not just right. the HPC. It's all. It's everyone. It's the whole. It's it's every uh, agency in the city. And it, and if you read what it says in the code about it, what it applies to, I mean, you could inter it's it, it, you could interpret it to mean lo a lot of things sure. that are included in it. And there's no no clarity to well, what's the limit there? I mean, it's not just big things like this, but um, so um, we thought, we when we, the first time that we read it internally, we were like, whoa, you know, it's, wow. it, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah, we can have a has, But you all have done a great job of getting it out there and being the guinea pig, you know, so that everybody can see what's involved in the process. Right. So kudos. Thanks. Um, and we're certainly happy to provide, I mean, provide any, any, we're at their disposal, basically. I said, we're at your disposal. But the, the fact of the matter is, and John we, we can give us an update now for my next point was the, the, the our guidelines are in place and uh, for, for insurance fixtures in the historic district. And here we are in uh, early May, um, we've moved to the next stage. Um, of, of the of outdoor dining uh, as the summer approaches. So, uh, John, um, can you give us an update on the activity you've had in terms of uh, owners, property owners coming to you with uh, proposals and any issues? But, you know, we always want to improve our guidelines. So anything uh, you can give us current status and anything you might want to say in like six months, we might want to tweak them or something like that. So. Well, it's uh, the, the one thing that is uh, probably uh, uh, most difficult for uh, the restaurant owners is uh, to actually finding an eight foot umbrella. Apparently they're rarer than hen's teeth. You can get a seven and a half foot umbrella, <laughs> but you can't get an eight. And so uh, for the sea of umbrellas that uh, are going to be created with a seven and a half foot umbrella at market space, 
of course, they, they've been somewhat concerned, but I said, uh, and I speak with uh, Jeremy Black or email with him virtually on a, on a daily basis uh, because he really represents that group. Um, and he's a uh, uh, federal house, the owner of federal house. Um, he said, we're, you know, we're really hoping that this, there's a possibility of changing this just because the, the actual numbers of uh, umbrellas may be so great that uh, it, could, it could be visually distracting. And my response is, let's, let's see where we are. Let's see what it looks like. It should look great. You're gonna have brand new uh, uh, umbrellas, even if it's a sea of them, that might in itself be inviting. That you can look over the tops of all of, all of these umbrellas and, and uh, see all the historic buildings all around. So it's, it's, we're, on a, we're on a wait and see basis. Uh, yeah. I don't think we're off on furniture and I don't think we're off on fixtures. It's just the umbrellas. Yeah, I'm a, a little confused, John. Um, we didn't specify a maximum height. Uh, we actually specified a minimum height. Right. Um, are you talking about diameter? Yeah, yeah. across. Yeah. Eight foot, eight foot uh, across. I'm sorry, I thought I heard height. No, I didn't. If, if I said that, I didn't mean it. No, I miss yeah. here all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes. Our, our, yes, our maximum diameter was eight feet. The height must be, we were worried about height um, from the surface of seven. We didn't specify a maximum height, which we might want to do in the future, but right now the diameter, so you're saying eight feet is uh, hard to find? Yes. Yeah, so diameter? Yeah, nine foot. nine foot is a normal uh, diameter. Okay, who knew? I didn't, but that is what they're, they're telling me now. They say, yeah. you know, Eight, eight feet is is arbitrary because it's it's not typically uh, what's used. Yeah, that would be an oversight on our part. We would want to basically make it easy for people to buy what's normal, right? And the diameter, we we, we yeah, you don't want massive. And there have been John has sh shared with me several proposals that were quite a bit larger than that. And we are talking generally about circular rather than square. So in the next iteration of this, we would maybe want to define a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. But people are, 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 property owners are coming to you for administrative approval on a regular basis. Um, yes, yes. 1771 uh, Grill and Tavern uh, uh, wants, would like me to move forward with their application. I can't because they have a, a violation uh, and they need to to uh, address that. I'll let them know that uh, uh, tomorrow. And um, let me see, uh, we're getting a sidewalk uh, uh, application, sidewalk cafe application for uh, uh, for West Street. What is that uh, level uh, for level on West Street? And they're they're looking forward to that. Uh, they're not going to do a park. What they're going to do a um, park. Yeah, but it's there's space for uh, sidewalk dining, and and uh, yeah. she talked about the uh, uh, the economics, you know how much uh, a park with and the spaces cost, um, and of course I, I think probably everyone's noticed that uh, Buddies has reduced their uh, parklet, um, so I think we're moving in a positive direction. Yeah. Once everyone gets everything in place, you know, hopefully we'll we'll uh, we will have done good work. Right. Um, yes, Buddy's purchased furniture, which is in line with our guidelines. I'm not sure exactly why the barricades are still up there. The plastic barricade is that temporary? Or it's to beautify. <laughs> <laughs> are they uh, talking about replacing those? They must. Have, they were provided by the city, I assume. I haven't spoken to them about that. About that yet. Well, that's. Um, I, I know but it is important. Well, by the way, John, thank you for uh, surviving COVID. John was sick last week, everyone, if you didn't know. So he, he's been working through this. He worked last weekend um, to get to <laughs> And the weekend before. That's the only time they would let me in the office. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so so the, those barricades are interesting. And I have to ask about the tents uh, on market space. Um, 
what is the situation they were supposed to be removed, if I understand correctly. Their, uh, their application for uh, umbrellas, and those are uh, uh, Iron Rooster, uh, their application has, has been approved. Um, and I think they're ordering uh, furniture now. So the way the city's approaching it, if you have an application for umbrellas, you can keep your tent up until the umbrellas are installed. Is that well? I think we're at the, we're at the sixty. We're at, we're at the sixty day rule, and and uh, that ends uh, in June. Tim, I when I drove by today, the tents were down. Oh, really? Good. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. I drove by yesterday. Well, it was like two days ago, and they yep, good, good. Excellent. Good. Thanks, Kevin. You didn't have to drive by, you just wander over there, right? <laughs> I was driving home and happened to, was surprised by how pleasing it was without the tents there. Excellent. Well, the circus came to town. I guess it's leaving. A new one will be coming along soon, I'm sure. Anything. Uh, <laughs> so, um, another thing I'd like to just update us um, all on, it. I think several of you were able to join for the planning commission's discussion of the city dock uh, project. We've seen more detail on, uh, on the concepts around flood, uh, flood barriers. And um, I would encourage you to go ahead and watch if you can. Um, I, I, I will summarize uh, briefly my, my, uh, my points had to do with the compromised street side where it was a fixed barrier of glass um, on, on that side. Um, it triggered a discussion about widening the sidewalk there, which triggers another discussion about the circle itself. So we'll see where that goes. But uh, they, I thought their ideas were creative. Um, they're planning for a literally a 40 to 50 year um, protection. Um, but that one feature was the one that I pushed back. I think I talked way too much, but I probably reiterated. No, that's, that, it's an important um, pedestrian and, and vehicular view of the whole plot. And so I, I really felt like they, they weren't getting that. They weren't getting the view across the Ego Alley from there, so why would they have this fixed thing? Everywhere, everywhere else was really thought out well with planters and flip up barriers and, and they just kind of like, a, what did they do, run out of energy on that side? That's just as important. So I, we'll see what their next step is. So Tim, I just want to say, I thought you did a great job. Yes. Yeah. They've, they've heard it from me so many times, but uh, uh, it's it's an important part of of the downtown viewscape from so many angles, including exactly. up Main Street. Yep. You can see it from Main Street. Um, and Kevin, Kevin raised a really great point. His kids run along that wall. I mean, this is not a wall that we want to lose, a, a feature in the landscape that we want to lose. So uh, it's not worth it's it's worth the effort for further design, which is what my point was. Um, and it, they're the designers, they should be able to figure out how to do this without, and, and, and to take into the account all the other constraints. Was it a code issue or? No, it was purely a design choice. Actually, it's, I think it's a choice of, of where to spend, where to prioritize. Costs. I think that's right. Yep. And and that wall got the the uh, the cheapy version, um, and yeah. it, boy does it show. Yeah. I, I think exactly. I think you're right. Um, so uh, I don't know, John, maybe uh, or Jackie, you, you can tell us. Um, I don't know their next step. Now this was literally just flood mitigation um, concepts, all of which we it was wonderful to learn about. There are many other aspects to the design of this project, including structures, which we haven't really had an opportunity to comment on yet. And we continue to encourage the, the group, AMRP, to engage us and the Planning Commission. Uh, I've said we're, we're flexible. We could 
schedule meetings together or whatever. So the more they, my message, and if you don't agree with me, tell me, the earlier you engage us and get our opinions with public review, the better it will be. And the, the more, the, the better the outcome will be. We don't want you to get to 90% design and then have, a, have you, us tell you you are out of, you, you are out of compliance. So, Tim, I think the Planning Commission was a little concerned that some of the issues that they felt had been raised in prior um, conversations about this don't seem to have been addressed. And there was some concern about, about that, that there, you know, it looks very similar to what they've seen before. So I don't know how you all feel about that. And I also feel the Planning Commission is very concerned about how the wall just stops at a certain point when you come around at the top of the dock by um, where Chop Tank is going to locate. And then there doesn't seem to have been much engagement on how it's going to be actually extended the rest of the way and how that will ever actually happen. And that you know, is it, isn't that a, a serious issue if you can't have, have those com components as part of the flood mitigation, which is probably really not a design issue, but I think the planning commission is pretty concerned about that. Yeah, engaging the fleet, for instance. Well, yeah. I think, I believe that they have, I believe the fleet is on board about it. I believe it's Chop Tank and, um, the Marriott, the Marriott, the Marriott. That who are not engaged at all. But at some point, I mean, you know, there there would have to be some serious decisions made about how how you would make there be a wall there if it's all if it's actually going to work as flood mitigation and property owners are not engaged in the process of partnering up. I don't know what that process would be, but it's you know. It's, it's not that portion of uh, uh, Compromise Street and those properties are not in the scope for uh, yeah, the designers. Yeah. And so, but it's a but it, Jackie, it's a serious it's a serious issue because because yeah. water seeks its own level. It's, right. it's not I mean, okay. the whole idea that they're not in the scope is like. I don't know. It's just, it's hard to understand. Yes. Yeah. It, and it won't be successful and not to mention gate, and I think that these gate, zero, at the, gate zero at the Naval Academy has the same topic uh, and, and the end of Prince George Street, same topic. Right. Um, so those are points that really have to be, I think, not just accepted. Oh, it's not in their scope. Therefore, but maybe they need to be continually reminded yeah. of that so that yeah. it doesn't just um yeah just is thought. there a working is there a working group in the city i mean we have the city doc action committee who's kind of supposed to be addressing this issue i mean we have a working group among i mean it's it's well i would love it to be in our code to say uh flood mitigation would be successful but it's yeah. not so we have our little lane where jackie from your point of view Whose lane is this in? To I don't know. Right. Sorry. I don't know that it's in anybody's lane. That's the nope. amber alert we're warning. Is that an amber alert? Yes, in Westminster. Okay. The city phones are really good about doing the amber alerts for you. <laughs> well, uh, there's a great con. Yeah, there it is. Um, so um, you raise a really good point, and I, I think I'm. I think as a commission, we would be happy to jointly continue to meet with the planning commission. Oh, yeah. I thought that was really a good meeting. I I'm always happy. I, I thought it's a really great dynamic when you completely. when everybody there was a lot of energy, and I thought it was really good. Yeah. So, so we're and happy apparently to... Eileen is can is 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 still employed by the city on a consulting basis and has some management role, even in the terms of Hillman Garage. And I think she's in charge of coordinating the 
parking issues or something. Well, she's been always open when I call her to have a conversation. Right. Um, so I, on your behalf, commissioners, do contact her, and I'm happy to contact her I, again um, if you'd like me to, to say thanks for the presentation. It's been raised that there are gaps um, necessarily. Uh, you know, I can always we can always make it part of our scope, but as in general, uh, we want the whole project to be successful. And what's the next step? Um, so I, 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 there have also I've heard kind of random rumory kind of conversations about revisiting the hotel project at where Latitude is located, and you know, and that that's not no, not necessarily um, no longer on the horizon. So you, you will have to wait. For, we will have to wait for an application. Um, right, but I just thought you should be aware of that. Why? So we'll have nightmares? Well, John, I well, think that that's yeah. really inappropriate for you to say. Well, we, well, we, we let me balance wait. it out. Let me well, balance it out, Jackie. Some of us won't have nightmares, but we will have concerns. There you go. Right. That's right. better. The, oh, our, right. our role, I, I think, when when that <laughs> parcel came up before, we should all be aware of the height districts mm -hmm. um, as commissioners. And if you, uh, we are, I'm sure you all are, and you can look at the maps and you can see them. And when it, it's an interesting exercise to look at the way our guidelines are written and the code is written um, for where cornice lines. So on this topic. Um, the way it's written, it assumes a gable roof, right? So it assumes a street uh, with a cornice and a gable roof uh, peak. That's not, when you apply that to a large site, it doesn't necessarily work. It actually kind of looks at the side property of the side property lines. I, I, I went into a, a bit of a rabbit hole here to figure out what you could build, for instance, when they replace that, that building. Um, under our current guidelines. Um, what it eventually ends up with is like a mansard roof kind of surrounding a square mm -hmm. building, which isn't really what we want either. So again, we could rewrite our guidelines. We've done a good job, I think, in getting guidelines for furniture and fixtures, but almost there are so many places in our guidelines that we can, can improve, <laughs> improve them. The, the height... The, the cornice gable, uh, the cornice and peak concept is really applicable to smaller buildings, not larger buildings. Same. And that building will, that site will challenge us um, and maybe that will, and we're open and flexible to work within it. It's the top height of the building is the important and the visual mass. So it's not just height, it's mass. So yeah, well. Well, uh, since you uh, discussed the site and, and uh, gave your opinions, which I appreciate uh, very much, um, I'll just say that we are talking about the site that would affect the view from the water from Ego Alley towards the Halsey Field House, correctly? Correct. Yes. Um, I have always been in favor of some change that would allow a larger and taller building there because that is a god awful, ugly blight. <laughs> on the uh, waterfront. Yeah. And that's that's the way I'll be approaching any review that we have. Okay, that's fair. Yep, that's, that is exactly what we're talking about. And that I believe is the app. Uh, well, we haven't seen an application yet, but... Um, I, I, I can say there's no design. There's, there's no a design, concept. Right? There's concept. a concept in, 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 in minds, but I've seen nothing on paper. Yes, and I would uh, always, I, I understand what you're, you're saying, Will, and we always need to be looking not at one dimension, but three dimensions. Um, so it's mass that's important, and uh, I'll leave it there. <laughs> no, I think uh, that hearing John say that there's not yet a design that he's aware of, I think our conversation right now is good for, especially for him to hear because he might be privy to some early thoughts and he can yeah. let them know that the commission is very concerned. Um, and I think, Tim, I think you and I and all the other commissioners would agree, we're looking for something excellent in design 
we exactly. just maybe have different individual opinions about how big the building should be. Yes. Um, I'm an old guy, been on the commission way too long, but we approved um, a building uh, for the National Sailing Hall of Fame uh, that was quite elaborate um, and it was completely, it was completely within the guidelines from the height district. It, it acknowledged the fact that it was, the surrounding buildings weren't of historical significance and it was quite a modern building. It wasn't quite the Sydney Opera House, but um, it, was, it was pretty, it was, it was a, a not a conventional or not a traditional, uh, you know, it wasn't, it was elaborate. Yeah, and I remember probably, well. That must have been uh, more than 10 years ago. So oh, I'd, I'd just like to say, why couldn't we have something like the Sydney Opera House? Why does it have to be another hotel? Is a hotel the highest and best use for every large building in Annapolis, including well, larger residential and commercial buildings? Completely. It's commercial use, uh, right? Um, so planning and zoning would have to, and the planning commission would weigh in, I believe, heavily on that, so. Food for thought. Uh, um, okay. uh, just for kicks, I'll go back for our next meeting and try and send you, a, I, I believe it was before where you're scanning anything. I don't think I have anything electronic but, uh, to find um, the National Sailing Hall of Fame approval for that. Jackie I remember, Rouse, I'm sure, could pull them up. Yeah. If you Google it, it's somewhere there. Yeah, it was, it um, gosh, what's his name? Who's the architect? Uh, Joe Boggs. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, that was a hearty discussion. Thanks, everyone. Um, <laughs> Any other administrative business? John, did I forget anything? I'd just like to say that I think we're going to have a pretty packed agenda for uh, uh, our June public hearing. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm encouraging anyone who has uh, a pre-application to come to our next administrative meeting as, as opposed to uh, this yes. public hearing. I try to get some of that load uh, uh, earlier but I don't know if it's going to work. So, so June's, June uh, 14th, I believe it is, is, is going to be busy. Okay. I'll do what I can to uh, uh, give you good staff reports ahead of time uh, for whatever is approved in a timely manner. And we have an administrative meeting on, right now on the calendar for the 26th, uh, John, um, if, if free apps come in on that, any, it, it, that would be, the agenda at this point. Any, any other, uh, I, I don't have anything for the administrative meeting myself, anybody. So we, maybe some pre-apps on the 26th, if not. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, in-person meetings are still not uh, approved. Um, I'm continuing to want to do them. Maybe what we're, we're slipping into the summer now, so maybe in the fall, but I really would like us to be back in, in person myself. Uh, but the city manager said that the reason, the reasoning behind it is the garage, there's no place to park, but I, I believe all of us know how to park and how to leave meetings. <laughs> well, and, this actually was discussed. Um, I discussed this with somebody today about the parking situation and there it's more difficult now that the garage is closed and they've changed the management system for the um, residential parking. That, so I think it's 24 hour a day and it, it is more challenging to find parking spaces in the residential streets. Um, yes. That was an observation that someone who has tried to do that, or I think Ellie might've told me that, you know, yeah. that because they've, it's not just that there's no garage, they've also restructured how you, how they're monitoring the parking. We're well, I'm personally well aware of it. Um, when we always got parking passes in the garage, free parking passes. Um, mm -hmm. So as commissioners, 
uh, of volunteers for the city, I think there's a way to work around uh, like a pass that we can put in our windshield if we're going to a, a town meeting. That so right. there's ways to work around this, and I'll continue to bring it up as because uh, uh, um, I I really feel like from a public transparency point of view, um, it's important. But they don't drive around and look at the passes. They have some other way of monitoring it. Well, all. whatever they do, give us a sticker. Right, right. Uh, Although uh, the, the city council is now going to be able, and the people, the city council meetings are live. Yeah. And they and their staff are going to be parking um, in the, um, the Taylor Avenue lot. I think it's either Taylor Avenue or St. Mary's lot maybe it's St. Mary's has given them, they've worked out something that they can park there in the evenings when there are council meetings. Well, I could, I could tell you I could, if I could get you parking passes for GOTS and GOTS is literally four blocks away. It's, it, well, I'd be perfectly fine with that. And again, I, I, I think we all know how these things, right. we are, we are willing to meet. I believe, I, I hope you all agree. We are willing to meet, uh, and figure out it. Figure it out. This is a solvable problem. Yeah, I have a St. Mary's parking pass already, so <laughs> I can Xerox it. Can... <laughs> okay. <laughs> we done. <digress. laughs> On that note. On that note, I'll take any other business. Uh, Tim, I wanted to do a follow up on oh. about. Fun. Yep. This is Tim. Um, I wanted to follow up on uh, funding for uh, att uh, attendance at the NAPC yes. uh, forum Thanks. this year. Yep. And uh, uh, is the plan that we need to, uh, we should go ahead and register and apply for reimbursement? And yes. do we have any sense of what monies might be available? Um, I know monies are available and I, I encourage you to register. Um, I will, I, I had on my to-do list to get the exact amount that you could be, we can be reimbursed, but I'm still planning on going. Um, we, the, the early bird registration did expire in early April. Um, no, it expires June 1st. Oh, uh, really? I just we was had, on the website. It just opened April 1st. The a registration only opened on April 1st. It, it, it's available till June 1st. June first. Okay. Well, good. At any rate, it's not the early bird. It's not. Uh, anyway, I, I encourage you. To, uh, I think I just sent you uh, all before this meeting. I think I sent you the link in your email. So right before the meeting, I, I sent you the link for the registration. So uh, we we will be able to get reimbursed at least for the registration fee. Okay. And I I certainly enjoyed that in the past. Uh, and I think we're going to drive out. <laughs> Road trip. Okay. Uh, any other business? Thanks for bringing that up, Kim. I forgot about that. All right. Um, uh, and then motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, Thank you Tim. Take care. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too.